We live in a technological wonderland. Ideas that were once science fiction, like touchscreen, speech recognition, and virtual reality are finally practical, and technology is catching up to our collective imagination. Hello, computer. But what about computers and robots that we can talk to in the same way that I'm talking to you right now? The idea of true computer intelligence has been depicted in various forms of media for a long time, but it's finally becoming a reality in the form of machine learning. By now, you've probably heard about self-driving cars, voice assistants on smartphones, or some artificial intelligence approaches to science and healthcare like IBM Watson that can help us dig through vast libraries of complicated information in an instant. All of these things are powered by machine learning. So what is it exactly? Machine learning is a huge area of study, but in a sentence, machine learning is the ability for the computer to analyze information and then create new rules. So instead of humans doing all the programming and writing every single line of code, we can instead point a computer in the right direction and it can continue on a path of self-improvement. And this doesn't even just apply to computer code. Companies like IBM are using machine learning to supplement their design efforts. We're creating a system and allowing that processing power to continue the process. Whereas originally it was just, we would have a handful of designers, maybe one designer trying to tackle a single problem. Now we have the ability of several hundred, maybe thousand designers. So we're giving the computer the ability to learn and create on its own. But how does it get started on that path of learning? Well, let's look at an example. Let's say you want to figure out if an email is spam or not spam. You could give a machine intelligence millions of example messages that are already labeled as not spam and millions that are labeled as spam. Within each message, you would identify features of the data like the subject line, the sender, the body of the email, the attachments, and so forth. Then, when a new email comes through, the machine intelligence can refer to all of the features of the spam and not spam messages and decide how closely that new email matches any patterns in the data. Then, it assigns a category to the new message with some percentage of confidence. So, just like a person, it's not perfect. Sometimes messages end up in your spam inbox, which is annoying, but the net result is that your normal inbox is a lot less cluttered. And as time goes on, your email client analyzes more and more messages, and it will actually write its own rules about what's considered spam, and hopefully it will appear to get smarter. This same approach can be used to assign prices to real estate, guess what reviews might look like for a new restaurant or a new film. You could try to diagnose a disease based on the symptoms and so forth. And with some more work on top of those basic ideas, you can get to some of the things I named earlier, like self-driving cars or voice assistants on your phone. And long-term, this will start to creep into more and more jobs. The technology is very exciting and will make our lives easier in many ways, but simultaneously, it opens up a huge ethical and political debate that I won't get into here, but I encourage you to research on your own because it's just as fast-paced and as interesting as the technology itself. And speaking of jobs, there's going to be a big demand for people that are experts in machine learning and an even bigger demand for people in other fields that are familiar with the basic principles and can apply it. I know machine learning sounds complicated, but it's actually not too bad and anyone can learn it. If you wanna get started, check out the link in the description to head over to our machine learning lessons on Treehouse. You can start with a free trial period and you'll get a lot more depth and information and you'll even write your own regression algorithm. It's all step by step, so even if you've never coded before, it's still a great way to get started. Thanks for watching.